Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, hello, 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 everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble. It goes from now until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. And if you're out there in about a half hour from now, if there is one to be found, we will have a citizens panel. Phil will not be here tonight, so it'll be a Phil-free night. So a lot of you people who sometimes don't call because you feel that. Uh, you have a hard time getting a word in edgewise when Phil is on. Tonight's the night for you to call, okay? But in the meantime, uh, we have uh, a, a guest, an old friend of ours, and we started off in our usual, usual manner. Hi, this is Gilbert Godfrey. No, that's not it. Okay. That's the wrong we one. Go. We're going to call our old friend here because, as we say, we always like to do this uh, so he doesn't, so he <laughs> get to hear what he says when he picks up because when he picks up, it's strange. Here we go. Come on, start ringing. There, there we go. It's ringing. Hey, it's Wednesday. You know what that means? It's time for Dennis Miller's scathing rebuttal to Michelle Fox's set on Sunday night at the White House Correspondence <laughs> Center. Hey, babe, Michelle Fox is more than trenchant in person or indomitable harbingers, is nothing short of seditiousness, and possesses all the charm and cooth of Arch Johnson gormandizing Vissy Swab with an opaque toothpick sparky, <laughs> hair throw, hair throw. Fuck you, Miller, you right wing Bill O'Reilly dick sucking fucking cunt. You couldn't improvise a booger after blowing your nose. Hey, what's going on? Hey, it's same old happy Steve Pearl. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Boy, things are happening. <laughs> <laughs> Big things, huge things, bigly, hugely things. You won't believe it. You know, I didn't follow <laughs> this thing too carefully because I didn't watch the correspondence dinner, but I hear she went after uh, uh, that fat fuck. What's her name? Uh, Huckabee. Uh, yeah, Huckabee, old one eye there, old yeah, it, it, stink eye, stink eye. Yeah, uh, 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 Sarah Huckabee, <laughs> and every even the even the press said it was in bad taste. And I'm I'm thinking to myself, uh, this is the White House correspondence dinner. It's the next thing to a roast, isn't it? You know, I yeah, mean, it's a roast that wasn't at the White House, and she's a comedian. I, you know, with those people. You know, representing a bully and who were bullying themselves. Sure, she did the right thing. Well, she had to work in absence of the president being there. You know, which usually the yeah. president is there. The reason you do it is you get to, like, give the president yeah. a bad time and so on. But he yeah. wasn't there, so she had to get along nope. without that that safeguard. And all of a sudden, everybody's on her case. Why? Because she was trying to be funny? Because she was only doing what that dinner has always been? Yep. Yep, just uh, just it's just comedy, folks. Uh, what uh, lighten up, snowflakes? Yeah, yeah. it's just comedy. Yeah. Now she knows how yeah. I felt when I played in South Carolina. But I gotta tell you, well, you know, I often said, "What the fuck ever happened to Dennis Miller?" First of all, I asked, "What the fuck ever happened to Dennis Miller?" Then I asked, "What the fuck happened to Dennis Miller?" You get the, yeah, right after they ask, "What the fuck happened to Geraldo?" Oh, yeah, look where yeah. they are. But anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, because, uh, and people say, gee, you know, he used to just be such a right wing, left wing comedian. He was never a left wing comedian. Never. You know, I was talking. He seemed a bit more liberal in the olden days when I thought he was kind of funny. But, you know what it was? But, uh, if, if you work neutral, okay, and you did pol political comedy, if you work neutral, but you uh -huh. did political comedy, then each side put their own imprint on you. But yeah. when you start to take sides, then you don't have that luxury of having that imprint being put upon you, okay? So, yeah. so he, one day he decided, oh, well, I'm just going to be you know, right-wing, and I'm going to espouse white right-wing causes. Well, that killed yeah. him as a comedian because he didn't have the objectivity a comedian should have. I mean, That's uh, right. you know, Will Durst is very much a leftist. But somehow, I think a right winger could hear his comedy and feel comfortable, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and well, he, yeah. What were you going to say? 
no, there's 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 approaches a bit friendlier too, and uh, you know okay, he's got that Midwest charm going there, like you know the Will Rogers kind of thing going on. Well, Miller helps. Miller's a and has he's, just, he's a, a bit, he, yeah is a bitter has been is what he is yeah which is what I am yeah. I'm a bitter has been too so you know I know what I'm it's a like. bitter never was <laughs> that way you can say anything you want there's no career to destroy <laughs> yeah there's right not even right. a shell of a career to destroy somebody said gee Alex you shouldn't say that it might hurt your career I say what career <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I I, Bye. You, this, I suddenly realized Romania died in the nineties listen there's no value in getting old you you don't nobody nobody gives you seats anymore in the, on the bus. Forget it. You know, no. you don't have that benefit. No. You don't have the benefit of uh, of, uh, of uh, people picking you up when you fall down. <laughs> you know, no, none of that. You don't have you don't have any of those old people things. But what you still do have is that <laughs> you you can get away with anything. You know, when you're old, you use that as your excuse. Well, I'm old, and I can yep. make that kind of joke. You know, and I'm bitter, yep, but I, I have a right to. All you, I have all a right to be cracky after what you do. So, if I'm going to have anything to make my age uh, be worthwhile, uh, it it's going to be that. It's going to be that I can say anything I fucking want to say, and not care who's bothered by it. There you go. Oh, you know, once you, once you, I'm 62. Once you hit 60, you have the, you earned your I don't give a fuck badge. <laughs> you wear it people, proudly. People say to me, why do you say bad stuff about, uh, about uh, 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 serious? They might, and, and they might hire you back again. Hey, it's been five fucking years. I don't think they're going to hire me back again. So I don't care who I upset over there. You know? Yeah, maybe they were misplaced their headshot. You never know. I'm just an old grouchy man. Just I, I give, give it up to that. But I don't have any other benefits. Nobody else gives me benefits. They try to take them away. You know. Yeah. But they, I don't have any benefits. So why shouldn't I? Just I don't know. The other day I was the other day I was going to the supermarket. And these young kids, uh, like teenagers or early twenties, you know, were going the same time. I mean, and they both stepped aside. No, you go first, Mister. I wanted to hit him on the head with the nearest opaque object. Oh man. No, no, I'm well, not that old. Well, you go first, mister. Well, oh, shit, I'm that guy. Yeah, yeah, well, when you start hearing the word sir a lot. Yeah, uh, don't it, call it, me sir, don't call I, me mister. It makes well, you old, corporate, and dirty. You, you know, you don't make fun of people, supposedly. You don't, you know, you don't call a black person the N-word. Uh, which we all know what the N word is when we say the N word, and we're all thinking it in our minds, but we don't say it because we can't say that word. That's the word that shall never be oh, said. Not, not good, not good. Uh, but they never think about old people, and they don't think that really this sometimes deference to age is is in and of itself ageist. You know, like, well, uh, sir, uh, th- uh, excuse me, <laughs> sir, can I help you, sir? You know, well, when I yeah, was I you, when sir? I was thirty, they never said, "Can I help you, sir?" No, uh-huh. they say, "Can I help you?" You know, so I I, I kind of take offense at that. I don't, you know, yeah. but if I'm going to get something for my age, then let me just be a nasty, <laughs> a nasty, vile human being and get away with it. Okay, yeah, that's how I feel about it, and I have every reason. When I get called sir, I cringe inside a little. Right, right, you know. Oh, don't say that about those people. You might not. They might. They might not hire you back. Well, uh, you know, they were supposed to have. A, <laughs> yeah. They were supposed to have a lunch with me after I left, and we never even had that. Okay, so yeah. you know, I'm not expecting very much from that quarter. So why shouldn't I say they're a bunch of fucking assholes? You know. So that's it. Goodbye. Good luck to me. We don't remember saying good luck. Out with you. Yeah. Now I would be I would be really nice to the whole industry if I felt there was a job out there for me, but since there isn't, yeah, fuck sure. all y'all. You're terrible, and your you know radio outfits are going bankrupt and going into chapter thirteen and doing all this and doing yeah. chapter eleven. I think it is chapter eleven. See, that's how much yeah. I know about business. And they're all going broke, so right. I should give a fuck. You know, I should nope. give a fuck that maybe I can get a job somewhere for $13 an hour doing a radio show. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Fuck it. Live yeah. off the Social Security and smoke weed. You'll be yeah. happier. You've kind of you've kind of opted somewhat out of comedy. You do it occasionally, you know, but you've opted out of Occasionally, no. I, I will not live on the road again. I'm too old for that shit, man. <laughs> and, deal with the, and the club owner says you can't use any verbs tonight because action words scare these people. And you got to do this. And don't talk about wood or, oh, stop it. I'm, no, 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 not anymore. Not anymore. Well, you, oh, know, how yeah, I, like you the, know how I know how I know I've gotten old. What? 
I can't get up on a st- stand up on a stool. Remember how you used to be able to get up on a stool and stand on it to get to something? Yep. <laughs> I can't anymore. I remember being able to. <laughs> I remember to skip stairs. Now I kind of walk I, down sideways. I'm even <laughs> frightened by a ladder now. You know. Ah. Oh, I won't go near a ladder. Really? No, no, I'll look at it from across the street. That's yeah, okay. Stay at least 200 feet away from a ladder. Yeah, but I mean, before I used to get up on a ladder, not even thinking twice about it. You know, you're just not agile yeah. like you used oh. to be. So, so, I mean, we have problems with being older, but one of the biggest problems is uh, every, nobody takes you seriously. You know, yeah. I, I remember years. Oh, at, this, at this point, go ahead. Oh, oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. No, you, you're older. I feel bad for you. You go ahead. You can keel over before I get. You go ahead. You first. Age before beauty. And believe me, if they call me pretty, something's wrong. Years ago, when I was a young whippersnapper snapping a whip, uh, I was with two women, <laughs> and we were at Max's Kansas City here in New York. And we were, and and I met these two these two women. I was uh, meeting up with them, and with them was this really old gentleman. See, there I go. He was like maybe 75. And I think he was 75. And so I said to him while we were all talking, I said, what's the worst thing about being 75? And he said, nobody thinks you get horny anymore. (laughs) And um, these two women, of course, are with him going, well, there's a reason for that. (laughs) You know, I mean. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, when, when I thought about oh, that, after that happened, I went around to all the women I knew and said, I don't know if I'm going to know you when I'm 75, but when I'm 75, will you fuck me? And they went, sure, I will. <laughs> so I got a whole bunch of women to agree to fuck me when I was 75. Of course, I don't know where they are uh-huh. now, and I don't know you know, where they live, and some of them are dead. You know, uh, uh, you gotta have contracts. You gotta do. <laughs> you yeah. gotta have contracts drawn up. But I somehow Tonight. wanted to guarantee that I was going to get laid at seventy five, and then I hit seventy five and found out I really didn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <So>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the age where I like sex, but I want to watch Nick at Night first. I'm watching this show called Genius that they have, in which they're doing the life of Picasso. Played by Antonio Banderas. It's very good, by the way, if you get a chance to see it. And uh, he was a horny little bastard till the day he fucking died. Oh, didn't he always? Didn't he have like a thirteen-year-old wife or something at the end? Or oh, something it, like that. Uh, he had a wife his, like... his, he was just, you know, he, he. And I'm, I'm amazed because at his age, in his eighties, he was like, I think, still going strong. You know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he had. Well, wives. look at Anthony Quinn. Oh, oh you go. Right. Yeah. I was look at Anthony Quinn. He had like 114 kids, age two to 76. His on the show, his his then wife, when he's looking over this woman that he's kind of getting hot for, his wife looks at him and says, "You want to paint her, don't you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to paint her. The gold for your style. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Some of that so, wonderful. Here's a horny little bastard, horny little abstractian, yeah. abstractian or whatever. Yeah, I, I just uh, it would be nice if when you're when you get older, people would take you more seriously. But apparently, they don't anymore. So, uh, fuck oh, them all. At this point, all. I don't give a shit. I've just, I've just defi- <laughs> decided I'm playing I'm playing the bitter card, you know, and I can get away with it. Oh, he's just old because he's <laughs> he's just bitter because he's old. Yeah, right. Good. Now, yeah. wait till you re- my, reach my age. You're going to get bitter too, and you'll find out why if you live as long yeah. as me. You know, I you see get all your the old coot badge, and you better wear it proudly. See all these other people dropping dead around me, and I'm just going, what? What? You yeah. Know? I mean, uh, hey, that was my favorite. That's rock. why I go on Facebook to see, <laughs> I go on Facebook to see political arguments and to see who died. Well, no, but yeah, I mean, but the, the people who are dying are like. Your idols, you know. I mean, how many Beatles? Oh, are, <laughs> how many Beatles are left? Yeah, two, and there's two I don't even give a shit about. That's that's <laughs> right. And and and, yeah. and 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 how many Rolling Stones are left? I think they're all dead. They just look like they're I alive. Mean, <laughs> they just stuff them and uh, send them on their way. You know, I often said about the Rolling I Stones. Think- you know, girls would go, "Oh, they're so dreamy. They're so sexy. Oh, they're so hot." And I go, "If you met them in a dark alley in New York City." At midnight, 
coming down the uh, other way. You go running in the other direction. You know these. Oh, that's why I like them. They were so ugly. They just. <laughs> they were like oh, really? The, the Devil's Rock and Roll Band. And Richards is like a, a old piece of driftwood now. You know, <laughs> he's an old tree face. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's like. I mean, he's got the most character of any of them in his face. You know, yeah. because he didn't yeah. give a shit about how he looked. Oh, he's my inspiration to never exercise. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> him and Donald Trump, they're my inspiration to never exercise. Can I, can I quote you he on that? I have to cross the street, drive, <laughs> don't walk. And probably to do lots of smack as well, you know. Oh, boy. Look what happened. Uh, we, we lost him. I got to call him back. Ah, that happens every now and then. It, it seems to happen with him more often than it happens with uh, with Bubs. Um, what happened? I don't know. Skype went bad Let's on continue. me. Let's continue. We had a moment there, and then it got ended. I don't splice. Even... We'll splice. We'll never know. Now, you, s- it. you see, I'm old, so I don't know where we left off. You'll have to tell me. We were talking about Keith Richards and oh, yeah, uh, yeah. how yeah. he's my inspiration but never yeah. exercise. See, I'm, I'm only 62. I remember things. <laughs> <laughs> From five minutes ago. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I have no short term memory. Yeah. I remember nursery school, but I don't remember five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I just I I hate seeing these people that I often uh, cared about dying. You know, it's like it's bad enough you hear about a friend dying, but when yeah. it's like one of these people you grew up with because they sang or they were in the movies or they were doing some accomplishment that you admired, and now they're dead, you're going, geez, yeah. you know. Uh, 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 my well, old... I, look at Johnny Winter and Robin. I lost both of them were like within two and a half weeks of each other. So that was like two punches to the face. And like, okay, well, I can't hang out with them anymore. Okay. I mean, I married a woman close to my own age. She's about two years younger than I am and looks a great deal uh, younger than that. But, uh, 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 you know, it is kind of one of those waiting games where we just look at each other and say, which one of us is going to die first? Yeah. But, you know, it's... <laughs> It's not like who's going to leave the other first. It's who's going to die on the other one first. Exactly. Who's going to wake up and the other one won't be moving? Yeah. Okay, let's take that. Yeah, every now and then, you know, she's sleeping, but she's so still. I, 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 <laughs> I begin to worry. So I, I like, you know, I, I kind of touch her to see if she's still warm, you know. And, yeah, she is. <laughs> and she's just sleeping heavy. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Make sure I put a mirror in front of her. See if it yeah. pops up. She's okay. Is this depressing, everybody? I hope so. Go fuck yourselves, that? everybody. Because <laughs> no death and grief and sorrow and murder. I'm an old coot, and I. Although somebody said Alex is like a, a just a just a grouchy old man, and somebody said you should have heard him 20 years ago. He was the same way. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I remember when he was a grouchy middle aged man. Well, no, I made my <laughs> living being a grouchy man. You know, I complained about everything. So what bothers you these days? What bothers me? Oh, man, the state of the world, everything. Nothing's really bothering me at the moment. Uh, you know, just uh, you know, getting older and waiting for that stroke. But other from that, just uh, I'm trying to enjoy every day. Yeah, but I mean, so, like, uh, for instance. Uh, I'm not enjoying the tooth extract- extraction I'll be going through next week. But uh, other from that, well, uh, tooth extra- things are oh, okay. By, by the way, just if this makes you feel any better, have you ever had a tooth pulled? I've had several of them pulled, and I got a few more coming up. <laughs> there is less trauma. There's less trauma to your mouth extracting a tooth than drilling into it. That's true. That's I, uh, oh, it, I did. I had a major root canal. I had two root canals one night, like late in the early in the evening, and then went on stage at the Improv right after that. Had no problem. Yeah. So, Teeth, I have no problem with my teeth. They numb me. You can do anything you want. Yeah. And my eyes, on the other hand, I've been bodily thrown out of eye doctor's offices. Really? I'm so sensitive. My teeth, you can hit them with a hammer. What do, what do you mean? Me oh, out, do anything you want. You're sensitive at the eye doctor? Oh, yeah. I, just, it, it, I, I once got a sty on my lid, and he tried to lift it up. No, 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 that's my eye. Ah! Well, I'll give you some cream. No, no, no cream, no cream. Oh, get out, what get is, it out. Wait a minute. What is with you? You're crazy. Oh, man, because you, know, you got a lot of teeth. You only get two eyes. If they fuck those up, you're screwed, man. You're going to be singing Golden Lady in a subway somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, come on. You know, these guys are, are professionals. They know how to play with your eyes and not break them. You know? 
I don't trust them. None of them. You don't trust They're touching my eyes. I'm like, it's like, look, it could be a professional valet, and I'm not giving you my car. I don't give a shit. I drive it. If I'm dying, I'm driving myself to the hospital. Really? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah, no, I... Uh, but that's just me. I don't mind the eye doctor. I had them uh, do... Uh, I had two... Um, what do you call it? Two... Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Cornea operation or whatever those things are. They, 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 they replace the lens. Uh, and, yeah. and and you don't feel a damn thing. You don't feel anything. They deaden the eye. Do they, and they put go, you out or are you awake? Or you're, what, what you're, you're, you're awake. You see the doctor there. You're awake. You see it and goes. They, and then it, oh, at man. one point it goes completely dark. That's when they've removed the old lens. And then he puts in the new lens and bingo, you're seeing fine. You're seeing better than you did before the before the thing. And then it takes about a week for it to, you have to be careful for about a week. You put a cup over your eye yeah. overnight, and then you put some drops in the rest of the time, and then you're fine. It's simple. Yeah, no unicycling for and, a week. And so now I have, nah, nobody's cut, nobody's, well, I have better eyes now than God gave me. Okay? I mean, oh, I'm sure, yeah, they, what, you have the procedure done, whatever, you, you see better, but nobody's touching my eyes. No, Unless but if my sight is in trouble, then maybe. But but the but the you know the replacement lens, uh, I I can see better. I can read from a distance better now. Uh, I all the all the way around, my my vision is better. And of course, I don't have that little. It was getting foggy in the middle of my vision. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, that operation that operation used to be an operation that would take weeks to recover from, and now oh, it's God, something yeah. that you, overnight you recover from it. Yeah. yeah, so hey, don't, don't worry, don't worry about your head off and reach in with the jaws of life. The well, no, I, I don't want to lose teeth. That's what I don't like losing. So I, I like I've got one tooth that's loose. It's been loose for years and um, it gets a little a little gamey sometimes. But <laughs> for the most part, I haven't lost it yet. I had another one that got loose. What these were 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 root canals that got went bad. Right. And so hey. I had a tooth that went loose. And I just let it keep getting looser and looser and looser and looser. One day oh. <laughs> I find that the, the cap, the crown had fallen off the tooth. And I went to my doctor and I said, the crown fell off my tooth. And she looked in there. And she said, no, that's your tooth. The thing had <laughs> self, ex the thing itself extracted and saved me $900. Because that's what an extraction would have cost. So I'm, I'm waiting for this one well, to self-extract. I got four that have to come out, so and then they're gonna have to give me a partial. And oh, oh. then I'm officially an old guy. Hey, put my well, teeth in before well, I have my cream how, on. How do, you, how do you pay for this? Because it's awfully expensive. My insurance is covering everything except the crown. The crown is like one third of what it would be normally. So, but that's coming last. Well, so you know. Well, with, well, uh, well wait a minute. What kind of what kind of what, what kind of in, what kind of insurance do you have? Uh, Medi-Cal. Oh, Medi-Cal. Oh, wow, that's great. Covered most of my dental and my med. Because, I had a because like, out, for instance, out the other week, and that covered yeah. that. Yeah. But Medicare, for instance, doesn't cover dental. But Medicaid does. Medicare just covers a stubbed toe, Medicaid. and that's about it. <laughs> no, Medicare M Medicare covers a lot, and then I just got does it? I got the that's SAG after right. for my supplemental. Uh, I got SAG, uh -huh. SAG after covers me now. And uh, that's uh, the best, man. All my pharmaceuticals are like a third less than they were, you know. Uh -huh. But but anyway, Medi-Cal. Me see Mike the Turk on 12th Street for Mike. Medi-Cal sounds like a good deal. It is a good deal. Yeah, it covers everything except the crown. The crown is going to be like only six hundred for the whole thing, so that's good. Yeah. So uh, I'm not crazy about having four teeth pulled, but uh, you know, you know, I didn't want these other three pulled. So well. There's like an infection. If we don't pull them, it's going to go to your brain. Well, I, well, I guess I got to kiss those teeth goodbye. Well, I had two teeth. I'm crazy enough. I had two teeth pulled, and I uh, replaced them with an implant. Um, uh -huh. If this one goes way in the back eventually, I don't know if I'm even going to do anything about it. I might get a little uh -huh. temporary clip-in uh, denture uh, because I, you know, so far back that, you know, they say you get used to it, and, but it is yeah. needed, so... You know, it's for rending meat off of uh, off the carcasses of raw animals when I was a caveman. There you go. Yeah, the Ted Nugent diet. <laughs> yeah, the Ted Nugent diet. <laughs> Shoot it. Um, Eat it. Shoot another one. Eat another one. Was there ever a time when you liked Ted Nugent? 
No, I never liked his okay, music. Okay, good. I didn't Even either. before he opened his mouth, it never did shit for me. And then uh, I liked Journey to the Center of the Mind with the Amboy Dukes, but that was it. And he didn't even write that. Yeah. And they never did anything for him. And then he started opening his mouth. Go, this guy's a cartoon character, man. Yeah, yeah. He's amazingly bad. His, his music is just high school shit. You know, because like Johnny Winter could tune up better than Teddy. Do you listen to play, anybody but... new? Do you listen to any artists that are new? No, no. It's 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 sad. In fact, the Gibson Guitar Company is going bankrupt now because nobody's playing guitar anymore. Really, I didn't so, know. So uh, clearly, that. nobody knew that does it for me or I'm listening to it. So then there'll be the no, old dead guys. There'll be no more Les Paul guitars. They're gonna. I guess they'll make them, but I don't know what's gonna happen. They just. I they just wow. read that Gibson is going is filed for bankruptcy, yeah, Chapter Eleven. That's too. Bad. Nobody's buying. No more guitar heroes anymore. Well, they don't want to hear. Our, our time here is over. And of course, that's Already? what My that's, God, that's, that's what the good Lord will say one of these days. Your time here is over, you know, <laughs> and he's going to stop the uh, stop the stream, and I'm going to just go on to the great beyond or whatever. Or hey, let the grand bell said to his wife on his wedding night. What do you mean my three minutes are up, Jack Carter, ladies and gentlemen? Let's do this in a couple of weeks, okay? I'm around, Daddy. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pearl. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And there he was, Stephen Pearl, our good friend, and uh, we, we love him. He, we, he's one of our old friends, our oldest and dearest friends, who would still talk to me. <laughs> you know, I have so few words. So f- I'm, I'm just, hey, I'm just a grouchy old guy. That's all there is to it. Let's be honest about it. Uh, just, that's what I become, and that's why nobody listens to this fucking thing. And I have no idea why I do this every night. I've gotten to the point where I go, is this worth my time? You know, a couple hundred people watch it, right? I don't know how many listen to it uh, in various forms. Uh, but, you know, we used to do a lot better on it. And I'm I'm just wondering... Uh, the, the lines are open, by the way. I don't expect anybody to call tonight. Uh, I, uh, uh, I just, I, I'm getting to the point where it's just very frustrating. I go, you know, I used to do a show for 20,000 people in the morning, 30,000 people in the morning, and now I'm doing it for 200, uh, you know, I'm 300, something like that. I don't know. Uh, is it worth it? You know, I guess if some of you are enjoying it, then it's worth it. You know, that's what I think. You know, if there are a couple of people out there are getting good time out of this and think it's all right. Uh, then maybe maybe there's you know there's some worth in it, but I don't see it you know, and uh, I, I maybe have to change what I do here or or my uh, way of doing it, uh, my modus operandi as it were, uh, and it, you know the the question is should I uh, what, what should I do how should I change it? Uh, I've thought about taking this thing down to one night a week. Uh, like on Fridays or something like that, and uh, but that you know, uh, you know that that, that 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 goes against what I'm trying to do with the whole thing. It's just that I just don't think there's any place for what I do anymore uh, in this world, and for people to appreciate what I do, and I don't know if I do it anymore. To tell you the truth, I mean I have a feeling that I'm just sitting here, like right now I'm I'm. Uh, just kind of uh, spinning my wheels, waiting for somebody to call, hopefully. Uh, and then we get like a handful of people. We used to get like full houses all the time, and now that's not the case any longer. And I'm just wondering where, where the audience is going and where they've gone and, and why, they, uh, why, why we should even be here, you know? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm beginning to uh, make decisions that I'm going to have to... Uh, do some kind of major change around here, uh, and one of them might be that I'll just stop doing a show. I won't, I won't stop Jack from doing his show or Damien from doing his show. But I think I, there just may be a nice blank space in there for a while, um, because I just, you know, I mean, I l- like to perform for an audience, and also when we have the thing called the citizen panel, I like participation. And if I'm not getting a decent amount of participation, uh, then uh, is it worth it? Is it worth my is, is it worth my time? And is it worth your time to even make a, uh, something to listen to? Well, here's an old friend who I know always always bails me out when nobody's calling 
or I think nobody's <laughs> calling, and his name is uh, Tom Yamaguchi. Hello, Tom. You're moving. Hey, Alex. You're moving. Uh, let me see if I can move into a position where I don't have that glaring light behind me. Ah. Uh, and well, uh, well, let's see here. I don't know. Ah, yeah. there you go. Oh, on I, my bed. I, I can see it's still daytime outside. Where it you is are. still daytime. Yeah, it's it's yeah. night it's nighttime here. Yeah, well, it's seven thirty three. Yes, and, uh, just and the sun is still up. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, then then as your sun goes down, if like Renee calls, we can see the sun still being up in Hawaii. That's you know. right. Yeah, yeah, it's still. Yeah. A, yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah. So. so Anyway, you sound a little depressed tonight. I, I, yeah, yeah, I am. I don't know. I just, you know, I, just, I, I look at the numbers lately, and they're very, they're low, and I, I don't know why, and uh, I'm wondering if it's worth to keeping on doing. You know, I've often said, please tell me when it's time to leave the stage. I don't want to mm -hmm. be one of these people embarrassing myself doing a show. You know. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I tweeted uh your uh full interview with uh, jack garfine over the weekend yeah yeah um, in fact i actually uh tweeted uh links to uh, two of your videos um i thought i'd re-watch your old birdie man uh video because yeah. of the uh uh we've lost the uh, the founder of birdie man yeah, larry harvey the weekend yeah larry harvey and, uh so i uh I uh, watched that again. It is very good. Uh, the documentary, it's, it's yeah, a lot of fun. The the Birdie Man video from '96. Yep. 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 And so I tweeted the link of that. So had about four thousand, uh, four thousand views. So maybe you'll get a few more. So uh, you got four thousand views on it. No, you you, you have, have four thousand. Oh no, views. Uh, on uh, uh, on uh, it is. Uh, uh, it is the second, oddly enough, it's the second highest number uh, watched, viewed uh, video that I put up on YouTube, and it is the highest that I've ever done on Vimeo. On Vimeo, I did something like 7,000 on that. Okay. And uh, I think it's 4,000 something maybe on, on YouTube. And um, it, it's, it's strange what videos of mine have done well. My wedding is number four. <laughs> uh, number one is uh, my remembrances of Ibiza in the old days. Uh, uh -huh. That thing has gotten like forty three hundred hits on uh, on YouTube, which is not phenomenal, by the way. You know, when we talk about the interview with Jack, you know, if Jack got a lot of people watching, we have about four hundred, I think, and sixty six as of right now on on mm -hmm. um, uh, Facebook who have watched it. But really, that interview should have thousands, you know. It probably will. I mean, it, it probably. I mean, let's face it. You're you're not you're not doing any publicity, really. Mm -hmm. You're not promoting it. I mean, you're. You know what? What do you expect? It's 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 going to take a while, but eventually people are going to discover it. We just need you know if if people are out there that are listening and want to promote it, it's very easy to do. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to share a link. From YouTube on 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 your Twitter or or your Facebook. It's called, way. It's called retweeting or re uh, on Facebook. It's sharing. something else. What sharing? Share, hit the hit the share button, and uh, I've got my Twitter set up. So anything I post on Twitter, yeah, automatically posts on Facebook. Well, too, I, so I have it the other way around. So I, you, yeah, you could do it the other way around. Yeah. Um, I set up a memorial page for my late housemate on Facebook, and uh, actually. The posts I do there actually mm -hmm. come and, and, and post on my Twitter as well. Now, you see, here we are, you and I talking. It's very nice. I love you, Tom, and it's great to have you on. But mm -hmm. by this time, oh, many months ago, we would have had four or five people already. You know? That's true. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know what's going on either, you know. Uh, and maybe if I just take the show off for a while, people will miss it, and then when I come back on, they'll find it interesting again or something. I don't know. You know? <laughs> or they'll forget all about you. Um, I don't know. I I think doing it less times a week actually might might do more harm than good. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to do a shorter show 
That's maybe a possibility. Hour, That's a possibility. An hour and go back to maybe well, five we, days. If, if it's just you and me by eleven o'clock, I'm I'm cutting this thing off. You know, uh, not that well, I don't I enjoy. I better get in everything I want to talk to yeah. you about. Well, let's <laughs> let's start in on what you want to talk about, and let's see if anybody else calls, and if nobody else calls, and fuck them all. You know. Okay. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. So I noticed that you've been sort of um, uh, bringing up uh, Trump's uh, interest in the uh, Nobel Prize, Peace Prize. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Which definitely yeah. I, I want to see him get because I want those people at the Nobel uh, uh, Prize Committee to have to put up with him. You know, <laughs> uh, that would be fun to watch. Well, I just have a question. Uh, let me turn off my email. It's or making a lot of noise here. I don't know if you could hear. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah whenever that's a, that's an iPhone, right? That's doing it. Uh, no, this is my uh, this is my uh, MacBook, my oh. MacBook Air. Mm -hmm. so let me turn off. It's dinging, and so I don't know if you can hear the dinging. Yeah. But at any rate, um, I uh, I just was curious if you actually know how. Uh, the Nobel Peace Prize is actually selected. Well, I don't know the actual uh, uh, method of it, but there is a awards committee, isn't there, who vote on this? Well, there is, but there's also, to be nominated, there's a nomination process. Okay, so how do you get and nominated? You get no the way you get nominated mm -hmm. is a previous winner of the Peace Prize can nominate you, so they get a nomination a year. So, for instance, um, the American Friends Service Committee uh, won the Nobel Peace Prize back in the, in the uh, late 40s, so that, uh, you know, for their relief work in World War II. Yeah. Uh, or post-World War II. And uh, so, uh, as a Quaker, I could actually suggest someone to the American, or the AFSC, the American Friends Service Committee, for a, you know, consider nominating a person right so i just saw this is not for the person to win this is just for a nomination nomination that was possibly selected yeah, yeah, yeah. so but the, the, the service committee asked people who do you know i think they should should win the we should nominate for the nobel prize so i figured this year just to piss off trump I'm gonna nom I'm gonna suggest stormy daniels <laughs> And if she wins, you can thank me. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, to begin with, the, the bad taste in it all is you don't go out and uh, ask for a Nobel Prize, you know. Well, that's you, probably you, you know, it's, it's not like It's not like you're trying go, to go out and get an award and you're, you're like the Oscars. They advertise everywhere. For your also, consideration. Yeah, yeah. It's not for your consideration, Donald Trump. You know, yeah, but that the L.A. Times, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and but that's what's been happening, you know. Well, and he thinks, yeah, he thinks that's that's how it does. He probably thinks Obama went to the committee and says, "Hey, give me an award." He says, oh, "Okay, we'll give the award to the black guy." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I don't know, you know, I questioned whether Obama should have gotten it. Okay, well, there, the he, he didn't have a body of work yet at that point. Well. Well, he he did ask for it, obviously. No, and once no. you award, once he gets it, I mean, what is he going to do? Turn it down? No, 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 no. Yeah. But I'm saying that I never got the logic behind it because there was no action that he did. He was still, was still I think he was only in his first term as president and early on, you know. Well, had, they they actually and actually they actually was were pretty open and and, and why they 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 awarded the Nobel Prize is because of his interest in. Um, in uh in uh you know denuclear you know yeah. low the number of nuclear weapons right and he was actually working with a uh a, a, a treaty with russia yeah. which eventually passed yeah so their idea was this was some kind of push for him to to, to make good on his promise because mm -hmm. he was a, in college he was a very uh, big anti-nuclear activist yeah, he was in the nuclear freeze movement back in the 80s but they were that was their idea. And of course the thing is with, with with the Nobel Prize people, I don't think they understood really American politics. And they probably thought that they were helping him, but I think they really hurt him. And I think that a lot of the hurt showed in the 
midterm elections because a lot of the resentment, oh, this black man got something he didn't deserve, you know, we're going to, you know, show him. Yeah. Uh, so I think it, it definitely did hurt him, and I think he probably shouldn't have won it. It would probably have been better if he hadn't won it. But somebody nominated him and what's yeah. what was he going to do he he accepted the award he made a great speech and then he donated the money yeah so you know do you think trump's going to donate the money if he were to get uh, the well he's not there's no way he's getting a nobel prize okay no 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 no, no, no to no, begin no. with uh um i was saying last night that um uh the uh football player uh with the rings in his nose uh Oh, you know, who went to Ch Kaepernick? Huh? He doesn't have no called Kaepernick. No, 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 no. I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about the guy who went to uh, North uh, North Korea and played basketball. Oh, basketball. Oh, uh, yeah. It, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. He don't want to do no war. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I, yeah he should probably too. get if it's if it's because of of uh, North Korea, he should get it before Trump. He set the whole the whole ball in motion. Yeah. Well, what I'm expect, you know, if it is, it's still, it's still too early to see how this thing is going to play out. Yeah. Once again, you know, maybe maybe the Nobel Committee might decide it's you know they're worth worth riding the, the Nobel Prize for the Korean situation because it might it might spur more activity to, to lead to yeah. peace. Dennis Rodman, Je Dennis, probably, Ro Dennis Rodman, by the way, is the name Dennis we were Rodman. trying to think of. Yeah, yeah somebody, somebody. <laughs> now, it, but, no, but, but he, when he was there, he gave uh, uh, Kim Jong-un, he said, a book, uh, a couple of books by Donald Trump or about Donald Trump. He said, so here you can get a better idea of who he is and what it's uh -huh. all about and so on. And he said that he, I think he probably had more to do with it than Trump ever had to do with it. Well, what I was, was going to say was, I think that. Uh, and by the way, know, by the uh, way, by the way, we him, we dismissed Rodman at the time, but in retrospect, maybe he wasn't as nuts as we thought he was. Oh yeah. Now yeah. somebody's trying anyway, to call in. Uh, we're calling in on the wrong line. Jeez Almighty. Anyway, somebody, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, I I think that it's more likely that um, uh, Kim, North Korea, Moon in South Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, are more likely to share the prize together. Uh, thinking about like remember when the when the Viet you know Vietnam War, right? Um, Henry Kissinger and Lee Duck Tho. Yeah. Um, they didn't they didn't award it to Nixon. You know, <laughs> they they awarded to Kissinger and and, and yeah. Lee Duck Tho. So I would say that's probably a more likely scenario here as well. Yeah. So you know, but. I just wanted to, to just let you know my little knowledge of of, of the the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, well, uh, here's Ray Renati, by the way. We've been joined by Ray Renati. Uh, where is he? There, he's coming up. There we go. Hi, Ray. Hey, hey Alex. How are yeah, you? Yeah, that was me calling yeah. the wrong line because I had to uh, reinstall Windows, and it uh, my Skype was not. Connected was way. not uh, not skyping correctly yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, getting back to this I mean uh, over the weekend I was saying how much it bothered me uh, this whole thing with with Trump asking for the Nobel Prize I mean it's not something you ask for you know I'm sorry no, know. you know it's something that is given to you because a bunch of people thought you should get it and he, the only reason he wants it is because Obama got one Right. You know, he thinks they give them out like they give out taffy at the beach, you know, and then they don't. Uh, you got to do something. You know, think of the people whose names are in, inscribed in that book, you know, names like Martin Luther King or the American mm -hmm. Fr Friends uh, Committee, you know, the Quakers or uh, uh, any number of people who have worked towards peace. There's also a Nobel Peace Prize for medicine and chemistry and so on. You know, there are a lot of other uh, awards as well. Uh, but we we tend to think of the Peace Prize as the the big award of the evening, you know, when it yeah. really shouldn't be. I think somebody's ability at medicine or something like that should be just as lauded as somebody who goes out and fights for peace, because peace is a very tentative thing, and that peace you might have achieved five years later might no longer be peace any longer. 
you know. Right. Whereas if you create a medicine that saves lives, it's probably going to continue to save lives for a great many years to come. Yeah. Well, there are campaigns, you know, we're talking about, you know, about, you know, campaigns for Oscars or Emmys yeah. or whatever. There are campaigns to uh, get, uh, you know, organizations to nominate somebody. I remember years when he was, uh, last year's when he was alive, there was a big orga uh, organized campaign to get uh, Pete Seeger the Nobel Prize. Yeah. And uh, they were actually lobbying a whole bunch of people. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, Pete yeah. Seeger. I, that'd be a hard call for me, you know. And yeah. I, and I knew actually, Pete, I knew Pete, but I, I, you know, uh, I don't know. I really don't yeah. know. Well, it's too late now. He's dead. Yeah. And and, and <laughs> it, it's kind of something that if it impacts the world, not just one area. And he pretty much, if he impacted anywhere, it was the United States. Okay. Um, yeah. But um, I just got a thing here. This was the latest, uh, you know, I keep getting these messages. Uh, um, somebody named Jeff Silva said, uh, Bummer did nothing. Uh, what, to get the award? Uh, I, he didn't do much. Let me put it that way. But if it pissed off Trump, I was happy. Uh, but anyway, this just in from the New York Times. Rudy Giuliani said, President Trump, reimbursed his lawyer, Michael Cohn, for the $130,000 paid to Stormy Daniels. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter, too. He, unfortunately, well, he was on um, Sean Hannity's show, supposedly. Yeah. Or he was on Sean Hannity. I don't I want to have to watch Sean Hannity. No. But that's what he said. So he's obviously directly contradicting what, uh, what Trump said. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I, I yeah. don't understand that one. You know, all of a sudden, he, why does Giuliani say this? You know, I mean, what is what is the what's his motive? He's what he's doing by saying that is making the president a bold faced liar. So how does that benefit the president or is Giuliani losing his fucking mind? Hasn't Giuliani always done things like that, though? Kind of, you know, turned on people. Didn't he do that with, with to somebody else but like he, 10, 15 years ago? But he's he's it's an injudicious comment that he just made, considering yeah. he is one of the president's current lawyers. At least yeah, I know. I know. It's crazy. As of the last hour and a half, because they change daily. Yes. But, you know, because <laughs> well, I he, because I know exactly yeah. what Trump's problem is, is that he keeps firing people and hiring people till he gets people that agree with him. Yeah. In other words, he doesn't want somebody to come in, be the expert and tell him, do this, don't do that. This is good. This is bad. No, if you do that, that'll be wrong. He wants somebody who's going to come in and just come back to him and say, oh, yeah, you can do that. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then I was just people quit on him too. <laughs> yeah, I was just telling my wife today, if he was a dictator in another country, you would just have people killed. <laughs> like they do yeah mm -hmm. just well, purge them <clears throat> right well you know i mean i think the man's lost his mind oh yeah uh i really think that they the call to fox was a distress call for help for his mental stability that was the most bizarre thing i've heard in a long time in yeah. fact the fox people were uncomfortable they were so uncomfortable they dumped him they got rid of him they said thank yeah. you very much mr president bye you know, because I, I know. They felt if, no, they felt if he kept we talking. You have a lot of work to do there in the Oval Office. <laughs> I love here. What are you doing calling us? Okay, let me be let me be very direct about this, and I know the women in the audience will be appalled at the the language I'm gonna use here. But let's face it, Donald Trump is married to a real piece of ass. Okay? She you right? Yeah. She is a gorgeous, a gorgeous woman in a very kind of plastic sense okay you know i don't know how much of it is real okay but nevertheless as trophy wives go you know she's the ornament on a rolls royce okay so um uh she's uh, just a, a, a beautiful woman and it's her birthday and they said so what did you get her and his reply was i got her a card now I, I hate think to, he was lying about that because it took him a while to say something. Because, He's like, uh, well, I got uh, a card. I got her a card. Well, I yeah. hate to tell you this, 
But if I, it was my wife's birthday, and all I got her was a card, I would never hear the end of it, okay? Yeah. So I don't understand. Hey, hey it's getting warm in here finally. I may have to turn on the air conditioner for the first time this year. Oh, boy. I wonder if it'll even start. Um, uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's just amazing um, uh, how crazy he's getting. And the second craziest person in the world, and if people didn't see this, you really missed great television, was, um, um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, God, all of a sudden, my mind is just going. <laughs> uh, what, uh, Kim Kardashian's husband. Uh, Kanye? Kanye West. Yeah. Uh, Kanye on TMZ. Now, we watch this show every day because we kind of like it. You sit there and they get this gossip about everybody. And it's, it, it's, it's one of those kind of things that my wife likes to watch because she says, when I get home, it lets me unwind. Okay? It's just dumb news. All right? Yeah. I love and it. And sometimes they, they, sometimes they have a, uh, you know, a scoop and scoop everybody. But uh, I happen to like them and I think they're fun and the show is fun. Well, the other day they go, we have Kanye West on for the entire hour. Now, they don't normally have a guest on this show. It's news items. But uh -huh. all they had up there was Kanye West Live. And Kanye <laughs> comes on, and I swear, this guy is berserko. All right? Yeah. He is crazy. Uh, he does a rant. He starts going nuts on this show. And then there's this guy, Van, on the show. He's a black guy who decided to take him to the cleaners. <laughs> And just said, you know, you're full of crap and you're hurting black people with what you're saying and you don't know history and you have no grasp of what the average person has to go through. And he just took him to the woodshed. And for this went on at least that part of it for a half hour with Kanye standing up and saying, hey, people, you know, I went out and I got plastic surgery, so I'd look good for all of you. <laughs> oh, well, thank, thank you. And then he Lipo. goes, and, and I, because of the pain of it all, I had to take opioids. And that's why I was so crazy a while back. Why are you crazy now? And because he's getting off. Opioids. And for an hour, for an hour, for at least an hour, a half hour of this show, it was this very contentious discussion and interview with a really crazy human being. And I sat there and watched it, and I said, "Thank God." Finally, at last, I can turn on my television set and see something real. Because what was going on there was not fake. You know, it was the real deal. And it was uh -huh. real drama. And it was real meltdown on his part. You know one of the things he said? He said, uh, black people were in slavery for 400 years, so they must, uh, essentially he said they must have liked it. <laughs> you know? Slavery is a choice. Slavery was they a choice. Like there were so many of us, why didn't we rise up? Well, there were six million Jews. Why didn't they rise up? Because when the, when, the, when the bad guy wants to take you down and put you under his thumb, that's, it's called putting you under his thumb. He puts you in a position where it's very difficult for you to be able to fight back because you don't, have, you don't even have the, the, the gumption to do so. Uh, and uh, I, he, just stupid stuff like that. He, he went, I don't want Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill. She's too ugly. <laughs> you know, we should put uh, we should put and he named some basketball star on the twenty dollar bill. We should put Wilt Chamberlain on the twenty dollar bill or something like that. I mean, <laughs> just moronic stuff. And you know, I don't know how this is playing in the black community, but you know, that's who he sells his fucking records to. Yeah. It's not playing well. I, I was listening to a couple of video podcasts today, black people, and they are really pissed at him. Well, they should be. You yeah. Know? I mean, he had no concept of what went on before he was born, you know? Yeah. So, it was amazing. Yep. It was just it amazing. It is amazing. So the question is, who's crazier, Kanye West or Donald Trump? I think they're both having mental breakdowns. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they're both batshit crazy. And and I think that people in the White House know how, what can we call it, how, how, what it, how sensitive things are there, how on a tether's edge we are with this mm -hmm. guy. 
who could, I mean, he could ask this stuff be done, and it, it's done. You know, his word is, is somewhat gospel. But if he said drop the bomb somewhere, they would probably have to drop the bomb, wouldn't they? Or is there somebody in between that can stop it? Uh, I think I think I think there's somebody that can stop that, you know, you know, um, I think that's why you really would start. Ooh, did we, we, lost, we uh, lost Ray? We lost Ray. But here he is. He called him back. So it's not a, yeah. it's not a problem. I was saying we, that we might have the 20th, 25th Amendment coming to play then. Yeah. You know, once we don't get to that. Right. Is anybody else going to call us tonight, by the way? Or is this it? Is this what it's what it's come to? I mean, not that these aren't two of the best callers I have, okay? So I'm very lucky about that, <laughs> you know. Uh, That's right, so Alex. I, I am not unfortunate in that respect, so let me just say that. I don't want you to think that I'm saying, well, it's only Tom and Ray. No, thank God. Phil and Patrick? Well, Phil's, Patrick Phil's and... got his camera thing tonight where he keeps trying to win awards for pictures he took 30 years ago. Oh yeah, and, scuba diving. Yeah, the scuba diving, and then um, uh, I don't know where everybody else is. I have no idea. Kevin, you out mm. there? Rescue me, Jeff. Well, Jeff's out in California right now, so I don't know if he's you know. Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Yeah. John came to my play. That was amazing. Mm. I saw him there. I'm like, I knew him. Like, but I'm only I'm only used to seeing him on my computer screen a little with a little black background. I'm like, why do I know you? I'm like, it took me it took me a couple minutes to figure out who he was. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the play's all over with now. Well, here, but uh, the director producer person is from New York, and she has all kinds of contacts there. So we might get to do it off Broadway at a company in New York. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Does that mean you come to New York? Yeah. Oh well, then you could come see me. Yeah. Yeah. You know. well, I'm gonna be there in October, nevertheless. Well, so. do, you know, okay, let's set something up and okay, let's, uh, have yeah. lunch or something. You know. Yeah, my, my my good friends get married, so I'll be there in October, if not before. Yeah. <clears throat> so. I hope I hope we get to do the show there. I'd be so great. It's a yeah. great play. She did yeah. a great job. What Amazing. are you What are you typing mm -hmm. out? I was I was playing drums with my ruler. Oh oh, I see. It sounded like you were using your keyboard. No. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. So I, and you and I don't get there a lot, but there people watching the show. Why aren't you guys calling? I, how do I get newer callers? That's another There's question. Too shy to call huh? and stuff like that. A lot of people are too shy to do stuff like that. Well, most people, you know, when you're doing a talk show. Uh, you know, you maybe have a certain bunch of callers that call all the time, but uh, most people never call a talk show. They listen no. to a talk show, you know. Uh, and uh, if they knew how easy this was and how much fun it is, you know, you you guys seem to enjoy it when you do it. Except, but Tom doesn't enjoy it so much when when Phil's here. I can tell that <laughs> because when I yeah. say when I say it's a Phil free night, first caller, Tom. You know? <laughs> I'm used to Phil now. I, when, after I got to know Phil, like personally, it doesn't bother him anymore because he's a nice guy. He just, he just, he just likes attention. I think so, but you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, he just likes attention. Do you think that's it? He's an he's an attention. Uh, uh, yes, I do. Attention whore. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. folks, where are you? I'll go another fifteen minutes here, and then I'll give up. <laughs> you know. I just, it's, uh, I, I got to figure out what to do. I've got to, maybe I got to change the way I do this show. Uh, maybe a, a different approach. Hmm. Maybe, I was thinking, I came up with the idea the other day of uh, having the show hosted by a puppet. <laughs> you know, just my regular voice, but a puppet. Like Howdy Doody. Yeah, just it's a, a, a puppet. Alex Bennett show. The, the Alex, Alex Bennett, Bennett show. show. Hey there, hey! John Fulwick. We can barely see you. You're, you're, you're in the dark so much that we can barely see you. There we go. That's a little bit. All right. But it, it, Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hey. I uh, was just uh, celebrating my 25th anniversary with my wife. I went out and bought her favorite flowers, and we just got home. Well, so. you know, we were saying that about, ah. about Trump. <laughs> if it was your wife's birthday, and yeah. all you got her was a fucking card, how would she react? <laughs> How would she react? 
Well, see, if it was Trump, you know, it was probably like a golden card made out of sheet gold, you know, and uh, see, then it, then it would be different. He has a golden chitter, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, a golden he does. chitter. Yeah. Does he have yeah, a golden see? toilet? So, Why would you have yeah. a golden toilet? You know, it's not, <laughs> it, it's not fun. Because you can. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah. I don't know why. Who who ever thought that gold was suddenly an important ore? You know, who yeah. who said that? I mean, I know that we believe diamonds are valuable because a company called De Beers forced that notion on us. You know, the diamonds. And Tom really, Shane. Well, Tom uh, Shane. <laughs> Tom Shane is like girl shy. You He's have a like friend in the diamond business. Fifty years old or something. You know? I, listen, the Shane I, Company, I, I knew fourth that. floor, Bayview Federal Building, twenty one twenty one South El Camino, south of Highway ninety two in he, San Mateo. Is he still doing his commercials? Yeah. Yes. And now you have a friend in the diamond. And because now because I knew I knew Tom, I, I knew Shane yes. Company. I knew Tom. He's nationwide. You did. What? What did you say, uh, Tom? Yeah, he's, he's nationwide. You know. Is he really? So, yeah, yeah, he is. Not, I saw I, I saw the same commercials on TV in Denver. I saw him. He was on TV, not just the radio. Well, then yeah, he's got to be like 120 by now. Well, when I knew him, he wasn't any young whippersnapper snapping a whip, you know. Uh, I mean, what the hell? Yeah, uh, uh, but uh, uh, in case people don't know who we're talking about, there's a guy who sells diamonds on radio. And uh, how all this is Tom Shane of the Shane Company. Kind of like <laughs> I'm looking at his picture now. He's yeah. got a spread. Like when he was, say, in his early 50s, and, and then now it looks like he's in his 70s. I, I, he's got to be older than He's got to be older than me, okay? Because yeah, when I knew right. him, he was older than me. <laughs> yeah, but we anyway. don't even have his birthday. All I'm saying about diamonds is diamonds, <laughs> diamonds don't have any real value. They were given value by the De Beers Company. Yeah, that's you right. Know? And and so all of a sudden they you know if you say something's worth something then people want it, but yeah. diamond diamonds I I think in fact I don't like <clears> diamonds. <throat> if somebody were to give me a diamond, I go don't waste your time, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I'm not a big one on jewelry. Yeah, yeah. neither am I. Yeah, I'm not either. And that's yeah. that's why I have an Apple Watch because I'm not very hot on jewelry. <laughs> I lost my wedding ring. I have oh, for no. 24 years, and I designed oh. it myself, and I cannot find it. I had my ring, and I've got. I lost all this weight, and the ring. I was. It was raining outside, and the ring fell off my finger. Just fell right off. Yeah, and my hands were wet, and so I've. I've had it sitting there. I've got to take it in and have it tightened up. But then I figure I'll tighten it up and I'll gain weight. You know. <laughs> But, hey Ray, what? It's, I, I haven't had a chance to tell you what a fantastic job you did in that play. Oh, you know, I mean, Ray played uh, three or four different characters, all different and all just incredibly interesting. And the play was was fabulous. You know, it was great. Isn't on, it? Yeah, it was based on a real live story. You know. We might bring it. She might get uh, bring it off Broadway, so that'd be cool. Answer Hopefully, yeah. they'll let us all the same yeah. people. No, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not. I'm not questioning your your motivation in this thing, but why is it always so important when they say based on a true story? Who cares if it's based on a true story? If it's an interesting story, it's an interesting story, and if it isn't, it isn't. Whether it's fake or whether it's real. But it's always like, oh, based on a true story. Oh, well, I better head off to that movie because it's based well, on a true well, story. Well, if I may say, uh, the, the, uh, the story itself is very intriguing because uh, the way it was presented to the great-granddaughter was erroneous. It wasn't what really happened. So it, it, the play, it, it pretty much, it, Ray, if you can back me up on that, is her uh, evolution to reality, to her self-discovery and finding out who these people really were in her right. distant past. And, you know, so uh, it, it, actually, you might say if more realistically that the play was based on a myth, on, on uh, you know, a story that wasn't really true to yeah. begin with. Yeah, it was only partially true. Yeah, uh, not even partially. It was. It well, was just I, a complete, I, I, I think uh, it was a. It, it was a, a twisting of the of the truth, and, and I think that if the play has a life in the future beyond Kelly. You know that that won't be a part of it. But for her, it was a, a 
you know, it was a way for her to understand herself because it was, yeah, it, it had haunted her since she was a child. And that was why they have that beginning, you know, that really freaky dumb show at the beginning of the play, you know, yeah, you know, the yeah. mask and stuff. Because well, that's right. like the nightmare she used to have. Well, I think the ultimate yeah. was the Cone brothers who with Fargo said this is based on a true story. <laughs> and it wasn't. I, I, it it was clearly it? was not based on any kind of true story. <laughs> but they got so sick of seeing that happen in films, they decided to put yeah. it in there. This, the following is true, I think it said. And all, the names have been changed uh, to protect the, uh, the, the uh, not the guilty, but to protect the... Um, Innocent. Uh, no, to protect the victims. Oh, uh, well, yeah. You know something that made this But no, the, so, the Fargo, so you, Fargo is a complete fabrication. But a great movie. Yeah, great yeah, movie. Academy mm-hmm. Award winning. Hey, you know what made uh, Ray's play so cool for me was the music interludes, the way oh. they inter- they wove uh, kind of Woody Guthrie-esque folk tunes that kind of uh, g- uh, r- gave more life to the story, I think. Oh, my and, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I the can mu- tell you. Those guys were fantastic. Two excellent musicians. Yeah. And I can yeah. tell you, Joe, I was in the initial reading of the play four years ago, and there was no music. It was just a narrator. And... Uh, yeah. She's rewritten that thing so many times. It doesn't yeah. even resemble what it was four years ago, and it's you know two hundred percent better. And the music just makes just is the icing on the cake. The music makes the play. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah, and, and she wrote all those songs too. And, and she the, wrote all the songs. Yeah, yeah. she's amazing. Ooh. Yeah. You would never believe it if you met her. She's so uh, well, down to earth. I, I hope she's that incredibly sometime, talented. Sometime our audience will have the ability to have access to this play. You know? uh, so yeah, they, I hope so. I hope just I like hope, them. I, I have hope. no idea what you're talking about. I okay. know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we, and, well, the play. Can I give a little bit of plot synopsis, well, Ray? Uh, uh, if you, you want, know, if Alex is okay with it. Well, <laughs> I just, the I just, play. I, the just, play's I, about I, a murder. You it's know, like two I mean, murders. It's got, it, yeah, two murders. It's got everything that Shakespeare would love. You know, murder, sex, uh, jealousy, uh, grief, uh, friendship. It, it's got everything. So you like, know, kind of like, uh, the, like the Trump administration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but without, uh, without missing any depth, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, it, it, I, oh, it, it might come to uh, some kind of TV. I mean, good plays usually end up there. I'm thinking Osage and uh, uh, August Osage County. Yeah, August mm-hmm. Osage County. Uh, yeah. You know, got got on the screen and um, Chicago. You know, you I mean, know, Jesus Osage, Christ, what August a, what a Osage show. County was written by, if I'm not mistaken, by a, basically a television actor. Tracy Letts. Tracy Letts. He was, in fact, he was on an episode of I saw him a while back on an episode of Seinfeld. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And he was part of and he was part of um, that the uh, the theater. He still is in Chicago. Steppenwolf. Yeah. And uh, yeah. He also wrote Superior Donuts, which I I played the lead <laughs> in, yeah. and is also a TV show now. Yeah. Wow. Which yeah. has gotten wow. renewed over and over again. I watched it once or twice and just went eh. Yeah, you I've know. never watched it. The play's really good. Well, the though. play it sounds. I got to play the lead. It, in the it play. looks it's like great. the play would be good because it's a set piece in a donut shop, you know. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, that's great. But when you try to make a series out of it week after week after week, yeah. and then you have to broaden it out, I guess, and go to the onto the street and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> it just isn't what you. You're not buying the play, you know. You're. And and maybe some things are just better left alone. Yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, I agree. Yeah. So, um, um, what what's going to happen to us? Are we in Are we in deep trouble here with this president? I mean, are are it, it, uh, it, it, is it, can he go far enough? To, well, he's he's ruining us in the world. Our reputation in the world. There's no question about it. Yeah. Well, the Italians survived Berlusconi. I mean, Berlusconi is just yeah. the, uh, you know, the uh, mirror reflection of Trump. I mean, he's a total asshole. Uh, and you should see some of the uh, antics of Berlusconi, well, like humping his 
cut his chauffeur driver uh, in front of the cameras deliberately. I mean, that's the kind of crass, uh, hideous behavior Berlusconi engaged in. And he's running and, again, isn't he? Yeah, he's running for something. I mean, uh, no, I think he's yeah. running for prime minister again or whatever. Yeah, I, I don't know. He's he, Yeah, I saw his name surface, but, you know, I, I think Trump's a four-year guy. Uh I, I, uh, the Democrats have to come. I got up news for you, though. The, Gallup, Gallup you know. recently did some research and came back and said that if he ran, it ran runs again, uh, in uh, what is it? Uh, to, uh, what year is it going to be? Uh, 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020 yeah. uh, that he'd yeah. win. He'd win. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, I think Bobby Kennedy should run against him. You know, Bobby Kennedy Jr. <laughs> Nah, he's nah, a, nah, he looks nah. like a little boy. No, he's not the boy. It's it's Bob Kennedy's uh, yeah, I Bobby know. Kennedy's son. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that guy. Uh, no, but he just looks so young. I mean, nobody no. knows. Nobody knows that much Far about him. I don't. I don't know who the who do you think the Democrats could put up that could give Trump a, a, the good run for his money that he deserves. I will just say right off. I refuse to talk about the 2020 election until 2019 no but what we're talking about about here is right now we're creating the bench you know and and uh we're creating the people who will wind up running okay uh and and so it isn't so much a matter of prognosticating but saying who do we have that's strong enough to run or who will be strong enough problem. by that time to run? We sh- we should be focusing on on the midterm elections right now. That's right. Because we put we, we're putting, you know, part of the problem with 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 American politics right now is we're just so focused on the presidency, and we see right now, I mean, the pre- president's power is sort of limited. I, I mean, without the Congress. But, 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 but hold, know, hold on a second. Hold on a really second, tone. Here's the problem we've got. You know, when Obama was president, I didn't hear about Obama every day on the news. You know, he didn't preoccupy the news cycle. Yeah. Uh, Trump, I wake up every morning and it's Trump did this today. Trump did this today. This is what's happening with Trump this and Trump that. And maybe at the end of the hour, they'll tell you what's happening in, in Pakistan or something. But... Mm-hmm. You know, basically, the whole thing is just Trump, 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 because he just likes to monopolize the news cycle. And no, I, it's, it's what's going on is it's the the the, the, the whole situation is, is such a big disaster. It's it's a it's a, it's a it's a you know a twenty car pileup every day. I mean, how do you ignore that? Well, it and may he be- likes that. He know it gets him with the attention he wants. I remember Ob- the press would complain because Obama would would not. Uh, capitalize, uh, you know, take as much of the news cycle as they wanted. He was, you know, kind of putting himself in hiding too much, and they were not happy about that um, because he he didn't feel the need, I guess. Well, Trump- pres- pre- presidents tend to get the news when they're in office anyway, no matter what they're doing. Yeah, but what I'm know? saying yeah. is, what I'm saying is, he preoccupies yeah. the news cycle. It's it it is. I I I can't remember any other president, Bush whoever who got this much talk on these on these news shows and if i were the news people i'd stop talking about them i just i if i were msnbc <laughs> if i were the head of msnbc i'd say new rule we never talk about trump unless he does something important well they should I, definitely they should definitely stop uh, you know carrying his campaign rallies oh uh, I mean, yeah that's ridiculous I mean, you know, all he, all he, all he knows how to do is campaign. He doesn't know how to do his job. All he knows how to do is run for the job. He's already, you know, he's already running for re-election. It's, it's the whole thing's, the whole thing is just silly. They, sh- they should, they yeah. should yeah. 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 He, he started campaigning this the second week after he became president. I remember. Yeah. He, he went and campaigned the second week. I specifically remember that. He went yeah. and did a campaign yeah. speech for 2020. Yeah. You know, in in other in 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 Europe, uh, I know England and France, it's illegal. You can only campaign for eight weeks. Well, I mean, that's that's the way it is in a lot of countries. You know that that there's a short election cycle, 
Uh, and, uh, you know, you start uh, going for it. I mean, what we, we should not even begin to think about it till a year beforehand. Okay? Right. But, yeah. but the way we re- – but you can bet your life we're coming up on two years next to January. In January, we will start seeing the people running for president. Yep. Yeah. What? You yeah. know? And, and Oprah. Part of it is because of the money. You know? Well, I, I, no, but I, 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 you know, look, I agree with Trump about the news business, but for different reasons. I think the news business gins everything up, you know? What what's news? It's what they say is news, not what is news. You know. That's right. Yeah, uh, and, right. and 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 so consequently, they need things they can gin up. And if they can say, okay, so and so is running for president now, let's go to his rally somewhere. They're filling <laughs> up time. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. And yeah. and they're making money, and they're they're selling time on their networks. Um, yeah. I mean, if, as I say. Trump has been so disrespectful to the press, um, using, by the way, a Hitler-esque technique, which is to disparage the press so anything they write about you then is fake, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, but he's, he does that, and it's been a big, uh, uh, a big thing on his part, and, and the press just sits there like a codependent lapdog saying, <laughs> kick me again. And if I were the news people, I would say, new policy. Trump, you don't want us to talk about you? Then we're not going to. That would drive him berserk. (laughs) That's a good plan, but unfortunately, they're not going to do it. And why aren't they going to do it? Because Because the status quo rules everything. It rules corporate life. It rules media life. It it, rules our cultural life. It's also because Trump being on the air... Sells, you know, that's right. pharmaceuticals. Yeah, so shit. They, yeah. they would all have to agree, and that's not going to happen. So as soon as one of them does it, the other ones just have to jump on the bandwagon and do the same thing. So it'll yeah. never happen. Yeah. 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 Even if they colluded and said, okay, we're not going to put them on it anymore. Some yeah, the only way the only way you're going to see the news do something like that mm-hmm. is to make another movie like Network. Network. Uh, it made a stab at that. You know, it, it kind of explored that theme. Mm-hmm. And then they were successful. The film was successful because it was a film. You know, the, uh, the, they were th- kind of throwing a challenge to the news. So, I, I mean, what do you have? You have shock jocks, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, kind of <sighs> took over radio for a while. And I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> haven't, I haven't listened to Howard Stern since he went on Sirius. So, and then I just lost interest in them because it's the same thing all the time. Well, it I, hasn't changed in 30 years. It's just boring. Yeah. I, can't, I listened to it for five minutes. I can't take it anymore. It's yeah. Nothing's different than it was 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I can listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't, I can't listen to him because it's like looking in a mirror. Uh, <laughs> well, he stole your stuff, and uh, but yeah. but just turned it into there was no there was no brains behind it anymore, though. Well, I mean, but th- that's where I made my mistake. I tried to make it somewhat smart, and yeah. I think maybe if I had dumbed it down, I would have been far more successful. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you know? But but then you have to live with yourself. Never overestimate the intelligence of the American public. You know? No. Oh. Um, but I mean, uh, it, uh, the fact, well, what I didn't like, okay, is that anybody who was on radio, who was at all controversial at that point was then referred to as a shock jock. I was referred shock to jock. as a shock jock and it always yeah. used to annoy me because I wasn't out to shock anybody. You know, I was just out to do the best radio I possibly could to entertain an audience every morning. Uh, mm-hmm. And yet to be called a shock jock because that was the thing to be called at that time was ridiculous. Yeah. So anybody who was a, at all controversial, and I don't know, was I controversial, Tom? I don't know. Uh, Occasionally. Well, Occasionally. well, you were, but it wasn't shock jock. I mean, every you always you always, I mean, like you were honest about your personal life, which yeah. I, I really liked. Yeah, you you were thoughtful about the things that you talked about. And you also had humor, and sometimes you were crude with the comedians and stuff. Yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't just one thing. Like Howard Stern is just crude. That's all he is. Yeah. You know. 
Yeah. That's all he does is crude shit constantly. And he's, there's no there's nothing else behind it. Yeah. There's nothing there. Well, he's there's been no there there. He's been successful. You know, those stupid assholes over at Sirius XM still pay him like 75 million a year. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And they don't even know if anybody's listening. That's how stupid they are. Because they have no way of finding out how many people are listening to Sirius. So. Well, oh, yeah, because it's uh, over the air. Do uh, yeah. surveys. I remember, I haven't gotten a survey from them in a long time, but they used to send surveys asking people, you know, what stations they were listening to, asking people specifically if they were listening to Howard Stern. So... Um, and I would say, no, don't listen to him. And I put your name on. And yeah. Who knows? Yeah. It did me, well, thanks, Tom. It did me a lot of good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they hey, certainly listen I'm to you. <laughs> uh, you know, but I mean, all I'm saying is, is that the media is uh, in a codependent relationship with this president. And it's like a yeah. wife, a wife who okay. gets beaten and just keeps saying, I love him. I can change him. You know, I can change him. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, this this actually the, the, the part of the issue is the, the nationalization of the media. I mean, you know, we you know we talk about why are local politics or local local issues not being carried, and that's because the media has been so nationalized. You know, like right now where I am, I've got you know we I've got uh, we've got a state assembly race where we've got like. Uh, almost a dozen candidates running for this one seat. It's it's getting a lot of attention in the district, but you know, but but outside what state, of, Tom? Outside of uh, East Bay, you know, who cares, right? Yeah. So 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 we have the 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 these that these cable TV networks. They're just so dominating the news right now, and all they can cover is national issues. So, so that's part of the reason why they're so focused on the presidency. Well, you you're, know, you're right. You know, on- you're right. They don't cover local issues. They don't cover local stories. You have to be around at a certain time in the evening when a local station runs the local news. And some of that's terrible because they try to fill it up with local news. So you're, you're, you've got countless stories about cats up trees, you know. Uh, but the fact is that and I, I don't know why the news networks don't do this, why they don't at the top of the hour take five minutes out and have a local person doing the local news for that area, you know. That's and, a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And be able to serve that function because, you know, what yeah. I learned when I was studying journalism and so on in school was that uh, the importance of a news story has to do with proximity. In other words, a news story... <laughs> that you will be interested in, you should be interested in because it affects you personally. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the fact is that most of the shit doesn't affect you personally. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no place you can, you can't go down to city hall and protest it, you know? Uh, uh, Nobody's going, nobody's going to hear you crying out in the wilderness to your senators or to your representatives. You know, they get letters every day saying, I'm never going to vote for you again because you did blah, blah, blah. And they go, "Eh, okay, he'll vote for me again. You know, they don't care. Uh, But locally, you have a lot more uh, power, mainly because votes are smaller. The turnouts are smaller. You know, you can win by less. And uh, so a, a mayor might listen to you. Police chief might listen to the public especially when they made to look like they were beating up a black guy or something like that. You know, they're trying to make excuses. Uh, All these jobs are uh, up for grabs in local areas. Nationally, those guys go to Washington and they turn a deaf ear to their their constituency. I don't, you know, the only time they listen to them is when they go back and hold those stupid town meetings and listen to what they have to say and then they go off and do the same thing over again. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, did you say, see that survey? Uh, it was uh, 25 of the most disrespected uh, jobs, starting uh, number one was politicians and congressmen. And number two, uh, I, oh shit, I forgot what two was, but it's uh, close. Uh, probably, by, radio, you know, lawyers pro- probably, probably radio announcer. I would <laughs> oh yeah, it was a uh, right. local, um, local talk uh, show host. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, was talk show host on there? 
Yeah. Or not, no, radio announcer, I think. and Or news announcer, that's news it. News announcer. Television news announcer. The, the least Te- respected? Televi- right. It was like uh, uh, congressman TV, were number because, one. Because the, and, TV news anchors. It's, I two, it yeah, TV yeah. news anchors. Well, you see, here's what I don't get. Because a TV news anchor's job is to make you love him. That's why yeah. at the end of every night, Lester Holt says, and thank you for spending your, your evening with us. You know, no, he doesn't care. But he wants to kiss your ass. You know, he <laughs> wants to be the wholesome host that everybody wants to watch. So I don't understand why they would be that much reviled because all of them are kissing the ass of their audience. Whereas when it comes to politicians, what they hate about politicians, they know I voted for that guy and now he's not doing a fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hey, well, well, you know, and then there's the whole aspect of the internet and how that affects news. And uh, you know, I get streaming media journals every day, and uh, you know, one third of uh, any kind of viewing on a screen is done, uh, you know, on uh, the internet. So that's a huge audience to be uh, away from well, the it, television. it's a huge audience to become ignorant uh, because they're getting their well, inf- it depends, no they're getting you know. their they're getting their information yeah. from unvetted secondhand people they're not you know uh, uh, the fa- the fact that a uh, guy like well, who's that who's that uh, jones alex jones can even oh, exist alex jones. Oh, can even exist yeah. is because of the internet yeah uh, because there is no news organization, reputable news organization, that would allow that man to do what he does online. And I'll tell you, if I go on right now and go over to Shoutcast and I look to see who's number one on Shoutcast, it's usually Alex Jones. I really? mean, with tens of thousands yeah. of people listening to him. Yeah, but then there's also worthwhile stuff online, too. You know, I, I listen to a, a local... Uh, economist from St. Mary's College in Orinda, Jack Rasmus, jackrasmus.com. Yeah. This guy's an amazing scholar on the economy. Uh, he's written books on our financial collapses. I think he's he's got his really he's got his fingers on the pulse of what's happening economically in this country like very few people I hear. So I think it's selective if you know how to shop around and get good quality news, you you'll You'll find it more often on the internet than on the television. I swear to God. Yeah. Well, you know, Alex, we still have KSFO out here, which I think is a sister company of KGO, mm-hmm. and and it's all super right wing, yeah. um, catering yeah. to everyone out here who's Trump Trumpish. Well, there was a. Um, it's it's twenty four seven just right wing crap. Well, uh, right now, uh, well. Uh, the, it doesn't look like Shotcast, not the same list I normally see. For talk, it says MSNBC is number one, but only with 551 listeners. That's how small uh. the audiences are. God, I'm not worried about how small mine is now. There are only 551 people listening to MSNBC right now. Um, but uh, how, how many do we have? Let's see. Oh, we have 25. Um, yeah, 25, uh, 25 on the video. But then, then they watch it later on. Although I'm not going to put these shows up anymore on Facebook. I'm not even going to post them. Uh, really? I'll post them on GabNet.net, and if people want to go watch them, that's where they can watch them. But otherwise... Well, you know, YouTube. Uh, what? It's on YouTube. Well, it'll be on YouTube automatically. Not the edited yeah. show. Not the edited but you, show, but, you know. You don't need to put them on Facebook. Well, I put them on Facebook because people go there to check it out. You know, uh, they don't yeah. really check it they out. They don't <laughs> believe it or not. They don't check it out on YouTube. They really don't. I, I wish I could say they did, but they don't. You're on TuneIn, right? And uh, Stitcher and all that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like for instance, if I go and see who how many people are listening to me in audio, God, I've been, it's probably next to nothing. And oh, pirate, that's how yeah, I always listen. Yeah, it's like uh, the thir- I mean, it takes less I think there are, thir- there are thirteen people driver. listening to the audio right now. And, oh, and, that's pretty cool. Hey, thirteen people. Hey, thanks for listening. Yeah, but if I yeah. tell your friends about and, this and show, that's one of the you reasons will learn I, something. I guarantee. Well, I've con- you listen to this fucking show, you're going to learn something. Yes. I've considered doing away with the video on the show. 
no, 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 I love no, it. No, I love it. No, yeah. for that very reason that I want, you know, I, I started this off as a radio show to begin with, or as an internet talk show. And, and, uh, you know, I, so I put it on video, and everybody's going over to watch the video. They're not listening to the audio. So why am I even running a fucking stream here, you know? Uh, you know when I listen to audio is when I'm in my car. Yeah, me then, too. Then I put my MP3 player on, and I play shows selectively that I want to listen to. Yeah, that's so, what I do. Yeah. Like, I, I got to do that with uh, your Holocaust friend there, Jack. Uh, you know, I, I haven't downloaded those podcasts yet. Yeah, I haven't, that's something I, I, that I, I would listen to. I never did an audio-only version of that, but the, we do have the video up on, on the uh, GabNet page, uh, also, yeah. on, um, uh, also on uh, Facebook, and also on Roku, uh, Roku, both the Roku channels that I have have it as well um yeah so it's it's any one of a number of different places yes uh tom yeah well i we've discussed this before but you know i think uh albert had the right right idea what you were trying to do here with the internet it was primarily an audio stream or program that had a video aspect to it so primarily it's audio but the having the video and available to people who can watch it, I think adds 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 a lot of value that people can see us. You know, it's not necessary, but it's attracting people. And I think it'd be a big mistake to give up the video. I well, agree. Well, I, I just I, don't know if it isn't. It, but it, 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 I question whether it's a waste of time for me. You know. Oh yeah. Uh, it, Alex, what, what, I forget the guy's name who uh, try, uh, almost committed suicide. You know, he stole his father's gun. You know, you had that guy. You right. featured a video. Yeah. See, I think I would, uh, on this show, your show, I'd like to see more of that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, because then you what know, you're doing is you're... You're, you know, uh, I think I think Tom once said to me, you should be doing more stuff like that. And I said, I hope I don't have to. You know, I hope that life is better than that, that we don't have to. The fact is that that kind no, of thing, not like yeah, but, you mean, know, that, that, those kind of things, that, that particular thing dropped into my lap. I can't remember. How did I get it? Who turned me on to it? Somebody turned. Oh, me. it was the guy in the wheelchair. What's his name? Uh, oh, uh, Patrick. Patrick. Uh, Patrick. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I was so taken back by it. And, and because it was right after uh, uh, what happened in Florida with the school shooting, that I, I felt it was an important piece for people to hear, and so I played that. Yeah. And also just the yeah. way it was shot and the black and white and him just looking right into the camera and telling the story about how yeah. he almost yeah. wound up taking a gun to school and shooting kids and so on. Well, see, uh, what, what well, I did well, well, wait, with wait, that wait, show hold, let, me finish, let me finish what I'm saying. Yeah, okay, uh, right. So that fell into my lap, okay, and I seized the opportunity because I saw the value in it. Well, uh, those things don't happen every day. And, and yeah. something with that much dramatic appeal, if I were to say, well, what am I going to do tonight to do dramatic appeal? So, you know, I'll find some other guy doing something, you know, then it loses its value. You know, it had value because I okay. did it that one right. night and it was it was uh, strong. Would you agree, Tom, with what I'm saying? Yeah, I, you, you can't force the cards. I, well, actually, actually, I'm, I'm, I have a different idea right now. And and. I've, I've mentioned this before. I, I think that the, the idea that you have the citizen panel has a lot of potential mm -hmm. to it. And I think the potential is the fact that people can come on and talk about what's going on in their lives, talk about their own personal experiences. And I, I, I mentioned this before uh, about oh, five or six, actually 2009, mm -hmm. I just turned off cable tv news and i just it's just i got that way too and i'm, I'm getting that way you know, again you know yeah. somebody somebody on the left arguing you know some democrat arguing no here, know. here's what every hour is like you start off they have the lead story they have somebody one of the reporters 
report the lead story, and then they come back to the studio, and it's the host with like two or three people as a panel, and then they discuss it for 10 minutes, and then they go on to another story with another three people. I mean, it's the same thing over and over again, hashing the same things, and if you go, and then also you get to pick and choose what opinion you want to suit your needs so that you feel fulfilled and that your misguided opinion is correct. So if you're on the left, you go over to MSNBC, and if you're on the right, you go over to Fox, and both of those places are going to massage you, you know? Yeah. And, and yet, MSNBC can yell as much as they want to, and they're never going to take a, a right-winger and convert any of them or even get any of them to listen to them. And the same is true of Fox with the, with the left wing. So we're so polarized that these stations have absolutely no news value because they have no objectivity. They are out, they have an agenda, they have an audience they perceive they're playing to, and that's what they do, and, they, and, they, and they're constantly jerking that audience off. Yeah, and, yep. and, and the reality is that, you know, we as human beings are really complex, and some, like some of my opinions are conservative, some of them are liberal, mm -hmm. and as we have a discussion, mm -hmm. you know, those nuances and that, that depth has a potential of coming out. Yeah. So as I said, you know, I, I I think that there's a lot that can be done with this. Mm -hmm. That you know, hopefully we'll you know we're, you know, and when people come on, let's say you know where you know uh, 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 one night somebody came on and, and we talk about they were living in the same town where in or they were living near Parkland, yeah, where this yeah. thing took place, and that's what I was responding to. You yeah. know, I was saying. Yeah, this is great when you actually have somebody there on the scene, an average person, saying what this is, how this is affecting. Well, we had that life. guy that night who doesn't ever call the program outside of that time when he called us and he took his camera out at night and went to the school and showed you the all the people, yeah. things, people, the flowers and stuff that people had put on the fence and so on. And yeah. in real time, we were getting a real sense of the situation. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, that's something that fell into my lap, and and I like programs to be organic, and for that kind of thing to happen, maybe more often than it does, but happen naturally and and organically rather than because uh, I sent out a producer to plan it. You know what I'm saying? No yeah, lie. yeah. Well, I think you're making a good argument for serendipity, and when that happens, yeah. uh, it's magical. And I, I was going to say. Uh, if I didn't value the show, I wouldn't talk about it. But I always talk about it to my friends. Mm -hmm. And I've met some incredible people here. I mean, I'm very happy to have reconnected with you, Alex. I didn't even know you were doing this until Michael Pritchard, uh, my neighbor, started blabbing about it. And I said, holy shit, Alex Benix has got a show. And so I went and I searched, and that's how I found you. And, you know, Ray, a fantastic talent play. I'm going to hang out with Phil now. You know, I didn't get a chance to talk about our big date, but, you know, I invited him uh, in in uh, July, uh, July 21. I'm going to be directing a, a multicam shoot of Dragon House. You know, it's our, our San Francisco's version of UFC. It's MMA kickboxing. We are sit right next to the cage. I invited Phil. He's going to come there with his camera. You know, it's going to be an amazing thing. And, hey, you know, when you make th these guys, like I met Ray and my wife and I met Ray in person, you know, then it becomes really real. And I talk about this. I blog about it on Facebook and, you know, yeah. uh, my so social media experience. So this show has value. I think you just have to uh, publicize it in some way and talk about it. Everybody has well, to talk you about know, it. I'll tell you, uh, my, my week uh, set is, is in uh, the use of social media. There are people who know how to use social media to get an audience, but you have I you have to get up at the you know not eight o'clock in the morning and start sending out tweets like crazy, uh, yeah you, you know yeah. and 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 go out and it's literally like running for a political office as it were. Well, you could do a Facebook ad campaign. I just did one for my video well, business. Well, well, uh, where, I haven't where, got where, any calls well, from it, but I I got about uh, but to begin four thousand views for it, it, for my. Uh, website uh just based on uh a 80 buck uh facebook ad 
you know, so I think that was worth it. You uh, know, just, yeah, I've I don't done make, that for my photography. I actually get business every time I do it on Facebook. As oh, much as I hate Facebook. 80, or yeah, ads, it all, it all cost right. you was $80? Yeah, That's 80 cheap, bucks. Well, you, you could set the, the limit. Yeah, it's you could set than your Google. own rate and, uh, you know, you get those eyes looking at you. I think it's worth it. Yeah, you know, it is. Well, it, you know, I, I don't it, know if I have the money to do it. You know, I'm, I've already spent enough on this thing. Without having to, you know. Well, let's John, tell Phil. Phil can't come on the show anymore unless he gives you eighty bucks for your Facebook campaign. Is Phil frozen for you guys or just me? Uh, uh, I mean, um, uh, Tom. I mean, yeah. Tom, one, Tom. Once in a while, no. guys freeze no. uh, for me too, Ray. Oh, okay. Like, no, well, yeah, it, he, but everybody's active now. Yeah, okay, well, Tom's uh, frozen uh, on uh, mine. John, John is is kind of a little freezing sometimes you're fine you're perfect uh, and so is okay. tom so you know uh, uh tom for me is frozen yeah no yeah. he's okay he's yeah, yeah. no he's, no he's been in the same yeah. position oh, my been, for it, 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 can I, I can i say this i don't want to be selfish about this when i say it but i don't give a shit i care what it looks like here you know, because that's what's that's what's going out to everybody else. Hey, John, else. I want to go to your event. I, you know, I did Muay Thai for 15 years. I just quit recently. Well, come, I got... you can come. I, I, I can bring two guys. I mean, these are expensive seats. They're, they're like right where the the uh, judges and the refs oh, sit. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, you're welcome to come there. Bring your camera. I, I, I mean, will. When is it? What's the date? Uh, July 21 at Kizar. Okay. You I'm know, gonna, Dragon be... House MMA. Just uh, Google that. Yeah, okay. DragonHouseMMA.com. Okay. You know, and I got the job for live streaming uh, all okay. their fights. I'm, I'll be there. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I have a lot of, I have like a bunch of professional MMA no. friends. Well, all, anyway. All I'm saying is my, God, my arm's hurting. I, had a, I got a, 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 what do you call it, sh that shot today? Uh, cortisone? No. Cortisone? You no. Know, no. Cortisone. No, 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 vaccination for. Uh, uh. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Mumps? No, no. Uh, Flu. Uh, but when you get the the, the rash and everything. Uh, measles. No, what? Measles. Measles. No. No shingles. 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 Yeah, I got shingles. I got a shingle shot today. <laughs> I, I had a shingle shot once before, but that previous shot was only good about fifty percent of the time. This new oh. one is is a new one now, and it's ninety percent of the time. So I went and got it. I don't know why. I've only had shingles once in my life, but I got it. Yeah. You know. Hey, my I, my wife and I just got out of Safeway, and I saw this sign, and it said shingles vaccines. Yeah. You know, big uh, yeah. little they're, they're cardboard pushing, sign. Well, and I, I took a quick look at it, and I told her, honey, I thought it said singles vaccine. Oh. You know, so if you're single, you can get a vaccine. Then <laughs> no, but, but uh, uh, they, they've come up with this new shot, this new vaccine. Yeah. And so they said, come on and do it. And I go, well, you know, I've got all the insurance pays for it. So we have to go. We went in and did it. And we have to come back in like three to six months or something and get a second shot. And then supposedly okay. it's good wow. for the next, you know, probably the rest what of What happens life. if you forget the second shot? Do you, like, get sick or something? Or? I don't know. Maybe you get half a, maybe you get <laughs> half, maybe, maybe you get half a <laughs> shingle or something, you know. <laughs> You know what's really hey. strange about my life was, and and Tom probably remembers when this happened. I got shingles, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I had this suddenly this pain above my eye and this kind of thing around my eye, and it was really bad. And I went and saw a doctor. I was up upstate in California, up, uh, in Mendocino, and mm -hmm. this doctor who normally gives out marijuana prescriptions was also a doctor, and he checked me out. And he said, "You got shingles." So wow. he gave me gave me the med, you know a prescription for the medicine to take care of it and it, it went away all right, but here's the thing: how do you get shingles? When you were a kid, you had chicken pox, chickens, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I never had. It stays in. I never but, had chicken pox. But you might have and didn't well, know well, it. Well, this that's kind what of I'm mild. thinking because I had a girlfriend, my uh, my younger girlfriend. Who got chicken pox? She was like 23, but she got chicken pox, and yeah. I and then she said, "Well, you're going to get it now." And I said, "Well, I hope not." And I never got it. And it I doesn't think, matter. No, you can no, get it no, in your here, spine. No, here's what I think. Uh, I got it when I was a kid, but I got uh, it like you know, just almost an inoculation amount. You know, just nothing yeah. to cause. Uh, maybe I got a couple of pimples somewhere or something, but nothing. 
like yeah. small, full smallpox, but enough to inoculate me. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. then, as the years went on, it remained there, and that's why the shingles came up. But I, I you know, they asked me, "Did you ever have smallpox?" And I said, "Not that I know of." And they said, "You probably <laughs> did." Smallpox. <laughs> you know, smallpox. Or, or chickenpox. Excuse me, chickenpox. <laughs> bring out your, bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. You know. I'm not dead yet. So, uh, Alex, I had chicken pox when I was 26. I was in Salt Lake City working, yeah. and all of a sudden, I just broke out in these things everywhere. So I went to the emergency, and the doctor said, you got chicken pox. He said, you must feel really sick. I didn't feel sick at all. I had, like, no symptoms other than the pox. Well, I had measles when I was a kid, but that, you know, that wouldn't have given yeah. me shingles. But I obviously, I got, I had chicken pox at some point in my life, and it just wasn't a strong amount of it enough to put me to bed or have my parents be worried about it and uh you know i yeah, get years you can later, get a mild case of chicken pox. years later yeah. i've got this and i i'm glad he's the guy said i'm glad you came to me he said if you had waited another couple of days you could have gone blind from this because i had it right oh, around my geez. eye i had it yeah. around the eye and oh. uh uh and and but the, the pills took care of it immediately and he gave me some pain pills to take care of it and then took me up to his house and got me righteously high on some Mendocino weed. <laughs> so, you know, which, by Did the you ever way, get mumps? No, but did you ever have Mendocino weed? Uh, I have. Yeah, oh man, that stuff knocks you on your ass. Did, did I ever get mumps? No, I never had mumps. I had mumps when I was a kid. Oh my God, that was horrible. Too, yeah. It was like yeah. two weeks of un... I, I just remember I was five, like six years old to go to the bathroom I felt like I was ninety. But what I mean, is, just what, to get off the couch. What is mumps? I, do you know any? You I get your swollen you get glands. swollen yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. And you feel sick. It's a, you feel like you have the worst flu you've ever had in your life. Really? Because, I, I'll never forget it. It was just like I was only like six years old or something. Because I, I it was I, hell. I never had um, I never had um, mumps. And and I do do they still get mumps? Well, you can get a vaccine now. You probably yeah, had a mumps vaccine. Okay, so there's a mumps yeah. vaccine that will keep you. From yeah, but when we were mumps. kids, they didn't have a mumps vaccine. You just no. got it. Well, had I that. had I had all those things, and I'm fine. I had chicken pox, measles, mumps, scarlet fever. Ooh, scarlet, scarlet, scarlet fever can screw you up big time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, uh, let me uh, let me make my picture smaller uh, so that we can hey, see. Hey, we just lost uh, uh, the Jack. Jack Bishop is joining us. Here I guess. he is. Here he is. I'm just waiting for my picture to. Yeah, yeah I, re- uh, he's making. A- I can't believe I'm calling you two nights in a row that you've had things that interested me the way you really? have. I thought you were we just- have a fantastic, interesting show tonight. You know what, Alex? I was thinking I could. I'm having a colonoscopy soon. I could uh, video it, and okay, then good. you can show it on the uh, okay. on the show. Well, I, put, I, I, put I the, think you should do that, right? I put the pictures okay. they took of yeah. mine on my Facebook page, and I titled it <laughs> Inside said- Alex Bennett. <laughs> you show off, you show off Bennett. You, you'll do anything to get people's attention. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But uh, hey, talk about chicken pox. I had chicken pox at thirty-one. Yeah, Did I had it wow. twenty-six. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. And um, caught it from uh, the six-year-old daughter of a dear friend. Uh-huh. She was. She had a headache for one day. I was down for the count for two weeks. And when I finally drug myself to the doctor, because I didn't know what I had, uh, you know, he said, uh, gee, Jack, I've never seen chicken pox in a 31-year-old black male before. Plus, <laughs> black I'm male. Sure I know if I know what you have, and I don't want to touch you. Now, this guy was a, was a poker-playing buddy of mine. And I don't think as an adult, yeah, I don't think as an adult, I was ever so sick for so long as I was w- w- with this stuff. And w- when the pox finally, you know, scabbed out, I looked like the backside of a Nestle's Crunch Bar. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, tell, I tell friends now, if you got a kid that hasn't had chicken pox, you take them around somebody that has it, so get them infected so they can get over this. Yeah. Because kids, it, well, it, they have it, a shot it for it now. It, uh, no, they don't. Yeah, they do. For small, My kids have had it. For smallpox? It's chicken no, pox. Chicken pox. Yeah, yeah, they do. They got a chicken pox shot. 
Yeah. Why yeah. the hell didn't they have it forty some odd years ago when I had this shit? By the way, hey, you're speak, I, by the Jack, way, you're Jack. When I was Jack, 26. is it? Can any everybody anybody see Jack? No, no. no. He's, he's just the little he's, blue circle he's going around, whirling around, around and <laughs> whirling around. There we go. Oh, there he is. There you go. Yeah, right. yeah, my picture keeps freezing. Mm. Oh well, you don't need to see me anyway. Yeah, but, so, but Jack, uh, I, I didn't get sick at all. It was the doctor couldn't believe I wasn't ill. I just had pox everywhere, but I didn't feel sick. Hey, I was so sick. How sick that, were you? How sick was I? I was so I sick. I was so sick. <laughs> I tell you. I was sick. My I don't, wife was No respect. I don't get was, respect. But uh, I spent two weeks in bed uh, feeling from various degrees of miserable to wishing I was dead. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like fun. It was no fun. It was no Sounds fun. Sounds like seasickness. Uh, I've, I've never had seasickness. I've been a pretty good sailor. But uh, uh, I had, I was vomiting. I had the runs. I was dehydrated. <laughs> well, were you vomiting and having the runs at the same time? At one time, time yes. The, cool. The, that's, yes. that's awesome. I, but I got, <laughs> I got that turnaround down pretty good. You know, I could I could go from one position to yes. the other real Woo. quick. <laughs> <laughs> probably kind of looked like one of those chocolates. Hey, he probably Linda looked Blair like one of those. Do. She had projectile vomiting and yeah. exorcist, but nothing came out of the other end. You, well, you don't know because they didn't have the camera down there. Probably looked like one of those chocolate fountains at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, the vomiting ice, ice sculpture. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, as they taught us in comedy writing school, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my it's my business. Anyway, uh, it, what's interesting is uh, we uh, we st now we don't have your picture anymore, Jack. I don't know what, what it's do, frozen. You, it's right? frozen. Hey, yeah. hey, it's, it, so, you know, it, it's some some not as we in the ghettois say. Yeah, it beats that way sometimes. I mean, is, do you have low bandwidth in where you are? Yeah, yeah now, now got, your picture. I've got FiOS and all that. Oh really? You know, for, for for three hundred bucks a month, I'm supposed to have damn good bandwidth. Yeah, well, now, I, now you're moving on my screen. Oh, you're no, gone again. Yeah, 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 yeah but same I, here. I, I, now I'm moving on my screen. I have but, I have FiOS and I have great bandwidth. I never had trouble with it at all. You know, well, it's terrific. Well, you know, I live here behind the barbecue sauce curtain, so I'm just glad to be able to get out at all. Yeah, yeah. What is that? The barbecue sauce curtain. I don't know. It sounds good though. It sounds delicious. <laughs> Well, that has always been my term for talking about being in Texas. You know, you're trapped behind the barbecue sauce curtain. Oh, I see. Like the yeah. Iron Curtain. Okay. As Alex and I were talking about last night. Yeah. So, anyway, it, it, it was, uh, um, yeah, we, 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 we lived down there together. Well, not together. Not together. No, no we, we, we've only been friends. Right. But uh, it, it was a, it was you weird. You've had pretty good-looking old ladies, and during the time I've known you, I wouldn't have mind. Oh, I, you know, I I, spell I, I did okay. You know, yeah, you did. I did okay. You uh, know, for a kid from I found out the problem with going out with good-looking women though is that by contrast you look uglier. So yes. it's it's <laughs> yes. it's a problem. Yeah. You know. So that's why you always want to date an ugly girl because she's got all of these great looking girlfriends. Well, no, but, no, better, I'd have a shot at it. No, but it's that old song about if you want to if keep you want to be happy, happy for the rest of your life, life make, don't make a pretty woman make, your wife. <laughs> watch it, from my personal watch, point of view, what, what, get what, an ugly it, girl to marry you. Then it sweats much. copyright. Watch it, watch it. Well, no, you can. <laughs> that was that was commentary. Yes, that was that, that, was, that, was, fair that was fair use. Clearly, fair use. I've got to light some incense. This is wow. Hey, what do you? Hey. Why, why do you have to light some incense? You just fart or something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I got this. Both, I, hey, I girl. got this from nuns in Modesto who grow weed. This is oh. really cool. So you got, so you Palo got, Santo. So you have got blessed weed. Yeah. No, so, this is not weed. This is Palo Santo, the sacred wood. <laughs> it smells like frankincense. It's really good. Oh, screw know. that. Light up some weed, man, and <laughs> pass it around. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. my. I told my 25-year-old grandson, said, the next time you come here to Texas to see me, you better bring me some good dope from California because I got a little touch of glaucoma. 
Well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, good dope. Uh, the trouble is that I, I, we, this is a whole different discussion. It's too late to get into it. But the fact of the matter is that um, with, uh, with the legalization in all these various places, the business of pot has become a big deal. And all yeah. these wonderful gentlemen farmers in Mendocino are losing out on it because yeah. they were, they, their stuff is the best stuff. You know, the stuff you're getting at the infirmaries and every, well, wherever they're selling them in California is now the commercial grow. And, yeah. man, I remember that stuff back up in Mendocino, and that was... That hey, uh, this Friday, uh, there's a film on uh, the marijuana cultivation along the Eel River, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm going to see it. I started getting involved with the Eel River because they want to develop a trail along the Eel River mm -hmm. Canyon to Arcata. So I'll let you guys know on Tuesday. Do you know uh, who's opening up a pot growing farm and is going to be in the pot growing business now? Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying, you know. They, these aren't the gentlemen farmers anymore. These are the commercial growers. And it, it, uh, I like those guys who used to have those little plantations out in Mendocino and were two steps ahead of the law. Anyway, I want to thank uh, Ray Renati for joining us tonight. God, what happened to him? Thank we just, you. We, we just lost your picture at the last minute. Yes, we did. <laughs> what happened? Oh, crap. Yeah, well, that's so we can hear you, yeah, Ray. John Perez, I don't know what happened; you. it just disappeared. Jack, it keeps crashing. Thank Sorry. you, Tom. I thank you. I thank all of you for what was really a nice little discussion tonight. And fuck all if everybody else didn't call. If I had you guys every night, I'd have a good show. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. it. Okay, bye bye. That's bye. our uh, that's our citizen panel, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, they're going uh, to wherever they go. Uh, off into the atmosphere, into the ether, as it were. And uh, let me get rid of them. Let me hang up on them. Yeah, so they're all hung up from each other. And I'm hung up on a lot of things. But anyway, folks, stay tuned for Jack Bishop and Amy Manuel next on uh, the uh, intersection. And then right after that, it's Connections at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow night. 9.30, it's Damien Chaplin and The Exchange. And then tomorrow night at 10, I'll be back on. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody, and thanks to our panel tonight. <laughs>